Hello, I didn't notice you there. Spectrum Ensemble co-founder Stephen Hall here, coming to you from a literal rainbow. I know, right? <laughs> anyway. Well, as long as you're here, I would love to thank you for coming and welcome you to Spectrum Ensemble's 5 p.m. series, Concert, Queers in Quarantine. In this program, we'll be sharing with you some of the things that we've been up to, both pre-COVID and during the pandemic. What you just heard was Maria from West Side Story. Who knew that Leonard Bernstein was the gay composer icon that we all needed? Well, now you know. Coming up, we'll have a performance of Dorothy Fragments by Derek Taiwaniuk. Derek is a fabulous composer from the Los Angeles area, and if you keep your eyes peeled, you might see him make a cameo in this video. But first, let's listen to co-founder Jamie Esposito on the Northwestern University Intersections podcast speak about the origins behind how Spectrum Ensemble was formed. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, I've got iced coffee, but you can have alcohol. It is 5 p.m. after all, okay? And enjoy. A, a sorority sister from Northwestern, uh, shout out to Grace Gable, did a podcast essentially promoting artists who were like trying to make it. It's called We're Not Starving. And so she asked me to be an interview and she was like, what are you working on? What's going on? Like, what, are you, what do you want to do? And at that time, I really wanted to start a queer ensemble. I had just got done touring with this group called Heartland Marimba. The guy in charge, Matthew Pulley, is also gay. And he said to me on the tour, this is the gayest he ever got to feel on a tour. And I was shook because he's a professional who's been around for a long time. And like, this is his organization. So for him to feel like in any way he needed to closet himself, hide his gay aspects of himself sucks. And I hated hearing that. And that was one of the catalysts for like, well, I want an ensemble that lets people be who they are 100% of the time. And through that interview, Stephen happened to be listening and he texted me as soon as it was done and was like, hey, we should do this. And from there, we just set a date and literally started doing it. We started talking in August. We set the date for May. And then it was in those nine months that we planned the concert, our first concert. And now enjoy Dorothy Fragments. So you're straight, but looking for gay sex. It's not gay to top, LOL. Mr. Nice Guy. What do you think, buddy? 39 years old, yeah, single, 5'9", and smooth. Mm. Morning. Never mind, you just wear read your racist in your profile. I have them tucked away in my closet. I'm Wait not into you. blacks. Not a racist, just a preference. Sorry. I'm a the people child. are not attractive. Saying too many things. Literally a racist. Man in the perfect mustache. Cringe emoji. Next time, read the profile Seriously. before you start woofing, Fuck. retard. Hey, wanna be my sugar baby? Just admit your scum instead of masking it as a preference, you Listen piece of shit. Treatment. Flattering, but I'm not really. Why are you gorillas so angry? Ha 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 ha. Okay. You think this is funny? You can die poor. Okay. Now. Who owns a house in LA? I feel bad for you. Bye. <laughs> Worry about finding a job. 
or anyone. Let me just check your Instagram. <sighs> Oh, no, I can't host or travel. I used to drink in gay bars, and one time came to a rope tied to a chair at an AA meeting, and it was explained to me that I was not a cowboy. How I ever made AA, I will never know. I wasn't supposed to make it past kindergarten. I had assholes for parents and no help from the community until I got to AA. Then everyone wanted to help me, even those who didn't like me. I was diagnosed with HIV 22 years ago, depression in 2010, and lymphoma in 2016. I came to Los Angeles in 1990 because I'm gay, and I didn't want to live out my life in my home state of Indiana. I didn't expect to get stuck in LA for over half my life now. I'd like to die in the woods, not the city. I'd like to relocate to Oregon or Washington, but don't know how I would unless I know someone who already lives up there. I just got section eight. I'm hoping to meet someone who lives up there who might be the godsend I'm praying for. I don't wanna die in the high desert of LA County. I wanna see the redwoods again before I die, to jump into a lake or river again, to be around nature.
Oh, it's you again. Don't mind me. Wasn't that just delightful? Derek Taiwaniuk is truly a fantastic composer. To be able to bring together all of those ephemera from gay culture and make it into a cohesive piece is really impressive. It's truly one of our favorite things to perform. And that video was really a pleasure to put together. It was really cool because we got to involve so many people from the Chamber Queer Festival and from the Los Angeles Rebellion Inclusive Rugby team and just a bunch of friends. So in case you were keeping your eyes peeled for the composer, that was actually him at the very end of the video. The singers, he was the last one whose face was showing before all of the singers dropped out. Anyways, let's get on with it, right? Next up, we have some excerpts from Cameron Leach's podcast. Cameron Leach is a fantastic percussionist, and we got a chance to sit down with him at PASIC 2019 last fall. In case you don't know, PASIC stands for the Percussive Arts Society International Convention. Per PASIC is basically a big old gay party. Well, it was when we were there at least. Anyways, after that, we'll be performing Alex Temple's Ah Yes, The Three Genders which we actually uh, commissioned and premiered at that same convention. Enjoy. The one, okay, so I knew of one professor who was gay. Mm -hmm. No one else knows he's gay. His mm -hmm. students know. I didn't know until a student told me and I was like, well, that's hip, because yeah. that's cool. And then like, there was another guy who came out on um, Facebook this year, specifically. He's a professor, and he was like, I just want to let people know that I'm gay, and I was worried. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was worried how it was yeah. going to affect my career, and right there I get pissed off, because you shouldn't have to be worried. Right. That sucks. Mm -hmm. That someone's going to be like, mm, he's gay. He's not worthy of studying with the fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> hey. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes me so angry. And when I go, here's the thing I've noticed that gets me real jazzed, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're told growing up, the steps to success, right? Mm -hmm. So then you do it, you get, and I'll, I'm speaking directly from self-experience right now, mm -hmm. got the, the A's in high school, went to the college, went to the masters, like I've done it. I've mm -hmm. checked the boxes I need to check. Now I've shaved my head and dyed it blue and people are coming for me, goodbye. This is what you think like makes me sudden, unqualified because, yeah. because I look like this? Oh, you don't know my resume. You don't know my history. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, wow, 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 face value. You are judging face value. Mm -hmm. Who I am because of my haircut? Mm. What? It's so surface level. Yeah, I level. think at the, at the end of the day, in uh, 50, 100, 10, 5 years, whatever, you know, the end game of all of this is, which is just equality and not being a dick. No, the um, world's going to blow up. Well, that'll actually. happen too. The sun's going to melt, you know, global <laughs> yeah, yeah, warming. Yeah, yeah. There screwed. is no end game. We're just all dying. Nothing matters. It's fine. <laughs> Nothing matters. Uh, but I think at the end of all things, yeah, like we, you shouldn't have to, it, you shouldn't have to post about all those things on Facebook. You shouldn't have to do all these things. You shouldn't have to think these ways, but we do have to now. And we have to yeah. until we can get to a point where we don't have to. And that's mm -hmm. probably never going to happen. You know? I, I think it um, can. I, Watching I, I children mean, right now. I think it can. Yeah, yeah. I just mean um, 
the amount of hundreds and thousands of years of this, yes. it's going to take to so long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's still blatant racism and yes. blatant, mm -hmm. um, yes. you know, sexism and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, in a perfect world.
Ugh. This is my first one of these, and it's not that good. Why do people like these things so much? Ugh. Still gonna drink it, though. Anyways, I don't know about y'all, but I'm about ready to wrap this thing up. I have an appointment at 6 o'clock. Okay. Just kidding. I don't have an appointment at 6. It's a pandemic. I don't have anywhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> In this last segment, we'll be playing you a clip from the At Percussion podcast when we talked about how straight people in our profession and beyond can be better allies to their queer friends. Then we'll close out with a fun little number uh, that we recorded at the beginning of quarantine in those first couple weeks when things were really crazy. It was a really fun project. Um, we brought in Isabel Urbina, uh, Jamie Esposito's fabulous fiance because you know that neither of us can sing, okay? 
and it has a message that I think we can all stand to remember at this time, and I think that the queer community is especially good at embracing, and that is, I will survive. Take care. It's been a pleasure spending this little bit of time with you. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, and enjoy. Now go on. Seriously, go. Watch the video. Bye. So one thing, and it's cute because my dad, he's a, a banker, and they do a bunch of diversity specific to LGBTQ. So a lot of the stuff he tells me is where I'm getting for my information on how to help people. Mm -hmm. um, and so one thing that he recently said that I totally agree with is in your sign off, like from emails, if you put your pronouns in there, like him, he, it shows you're an ally automatically, that you respect people's pronouns. She, her, they, them, if they're trans, they now know you are open to the trans community and stuff like that. Um, I think just like, sh like, oh, this is a queer composer, like just mentioning references to things that are gay. Um, play some of the music we, uh, we got commissioned for the last concert and spotlight the fact that it's on uh, the queer, like it's for queer people. I don't know, Stephen, do you have anything else? Yeah, I don't know. There's just like lots of little ways like that. It's not like you have to always be like, I'm pro-gay. Like, yeah. if you're gay, come out to me or something. You know, like right. you, you can just be open to it in all these small ways just uh, that come up in everyday life. Like if there's something that comes up, don't not talk about it just because it's not relevant or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah.